Hi, welcome back to another tutorial with One Stop Academy. It's Alison. Today's tutorial is on the use of the Zoom app for hosting meetings over the internet. So if you work from home or if you're learning from home, you've probably heard about the Zoom app. You probably hear about Zoom meetings and Zoom rooms. Well, Zoom is a platform for video and audio conferencing collaborations of different sorts, chats and webinars across different devices like your mobile phones, your laptops, your tablets, desktops, basically any device which can run a web app, has a webcam and can um, and offers um, audio connect connections or audio connectivity. Yep. Zoom has become a household name because it's 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 kind of easy to use although some of its features can be intimidating but hopefully at the end of by the end of this tutorial you would have no problems using the app so the zoom app allows you to virtually interact with um, your colleagues so if you're a worker working from home the zoom app will allow you to virtually interact with your boss for example and if you're a teacher or if you're a student the zoom app will allow you to virtually connect with your teacher or your students amongst its services the zoom app allows video or audio connections or both it also allows live chats so while a session is on you can be having a live chat it also allows you to record sessions so that you can play the sessions later. So if you're a tutor or an educator and you have a class, you have a Zoom meeting, you can record your class or your lecture so that any student who missed a particular lecture can follow up with the recorded session. We're going to see how to um, use some of the features of Zoom and if you have any question which this tutorial won't cover you can always leave questions in the comment section so first things first let's see how to get started on Zoom the first step is to sign up so if you're not signed up you have to be signed up for the first time so on your web browser key in the URL Zoom US. It will bring you to the official website of Zoom. On the top right corner over here, click on the on the orange button which says sign up. It's free. So right here. This will lead you to another page to verify your date of birth. This is because the Zoom app does not admit anybody less than the age of 16 or younger than 16 so but if you're younger than 16 you can use the account of someone who is older than 16 probably to attend a class or to have a meeting of any sort so that's the essence of this verification so when you given your age you'll be directed to the next page which is where you include your email your work email address if you have one or just your normal email address so you key that in and then click on the sign up button after you must have clicked on the sign up button you will receive an email from zoom to activate your account so assess your email account and then click on the activate account button this will redirect you to another page where you will fill in your first name, last name, and where you will create a password. So on this page, you fill in your first name, last name, password, and click on continue. You'll be redirected to another page where you'll be asked if you'd like to invite other administrators or staff members to sign up for their own Zoom account. So you can enter their email addresses and select the I am not a robot checkbox. But if you don't want to do that, you can just click on skip this step. And when you're done with all that, you're good to go. So after the this stage, you can now start a test meeting. 
by clicking on start meeting now okay to be able to run the zoom app on your device you need something called a zoom client to host meetings it's like a plugin which you need to have on your device so while still on the website zoom.us type a forward slash and then download enter this will take us to the download center where we can download the zoom client for meetings so if we had gone ahead to start a test meeting it would have still um, automatically downloaded but this is if you want to do it manually on my computer I already have the zoom app installed so I can just simply open it up so let's go ahead to see how to schedule a meeting there are um, three options for this that is for scheduling a meeting you can choose to schedule through the desktop app you can also schedule online and then you can schedule in your learning management system so we'll see how to schedule using the desktop app and using the online link so we've done this first step which is to open up the zoom desktop app the next is to sign in entering your email so correctly typing in your email address and your password will lead you to the home page of the zoom app so if you're led to the home tab click on the schedule button enter your preferred topic date and then other related details for the meeting so if you're a tutor you could just use um, the name of your class or the subject or the course as the topic alongside your name you type in when you want to start the meeting including the date and time and then the duration of the meeting okay so for the meeting id you have two options for the app to generate an id automatically or to use your personal meeting id which is constant so for, ev for every meeting that you're going to host if you click on personal meeting id it's going to be this same meeting id but if you click on generate automatically every meeting will have a different id if you want your meeting to be a closed meeting where a participant that has the meeting id has to have a password then you can check this box require meeting password but if you want it to be an open meeting where a participant that has the meeting id can join the meeting without any form of um, authentication then you can leave the box unchecked under the video se section you have an option to leave your video on or off as the host so it is recommended that you leave your video off then when you're comfortable and when everything is set your background is set you can now turn your video on and then you also have the options to turn the video of your participants on or off so you go with whatever suits you in the audio section it's recommended to just leave it as a telephone and computer audio if you're going to be sending out reminders for the meeting you can select over here the means so you can send your reminders through outlook or through your google calendar or other calendars if you if you have so and there are other advanced options which you may like to explore but the first advanced option is to enable waiting room checking this box will give you access as the host to choose who joins the meeting so even if a participant has the id and the password when the participant wants to join the meeting he's first admitted into the waiting room and then until the host gives the participant access to the meeting it's like a reception in a physical setting if you check the enable join before host box if you are a host and as you mean the meeting is supposed to start by 10 a.m and you are not connected yet at 10 a.m a participant can join the meeting even before you join that's what happens when you check this box 
Now, if you check the box for mute participants on entry, the audio of any participant trying to join the meeting will be disabled until you as the host enables the audio. Check this box for automatically record meeting on the local computer, which is actually recommended. The meeting is recorded from the beginning to the end. So if you're a tutor and you have your sessions or your classes recorded, after the class you can always have access to your session for review purposes. Or you can have a copy and your students also can have copies. But when you are satisfied with your settings, you can now click on the schedule button. Okay, so having scheduled your meeting, there are some things that you have to put in place before you start your meeting. When The first is that when you're signed in, you have to remain signed in so that your participants can join without any hitch. Also, check your internet speed. Another thing is to turn your camera on and have a good camera level. That is, set your camera at eye level and also ensure that your lighting is good. Also, be mindful of what's going on behind you because you, you have to have a good background so that you don't distract your participants. So think about having a solid wall behind you without so many colors and, and all. Zoom actually gives you the option of having a virtual background so if you don't have a solid wall where you are you can use a virtual background. So to assess the settings for the virtual background on the top right corner of your home page click on settings. Click on virtual background. There are also other settings that you can manipulate according to your preferences. You have settings for the video settings for the audio and sharing the screen this is a very valuable feature of the zoom app you can share your screen that is switch from the video the, the webcam view to some other document like if you have some slides prepared for a presentation or a lecture you can share the screen of um, your presentation if you have a video that you would like to play you can share your screen to play the video but also make sure that your audio is turned on for you to play the video and so many other um, screens that you can share so and then the chat settings and virtual background recording profile and so many other settings so feel free to um, explore these settings to see how they fit what you want as a host, as a meeting host, there is a variety of controls that you can use to secure your meeting. And we're going to look at um, some of them. Let's just quickly schedule a meeting. Okay, so I have scheduled a meeting which is supposed to start in three minutes. If you look right here um, where the information about the scheduled meeting is, you would see starts in three minutes but then you can go ahead and start your meeting before the actual time all you have to do is now to now wait for your participants to join if you have some things that you want to add or remove from your scheduled meeting from its settings you can just click on the three dots beside the name of your, sh um, your meeting and then make some changes or you can copy the invitation and send to a participant via email or any other source. You can also um, delete the schedule, the scheduled meeting and schedule another meeting. Okay, so let's just go ahead to start our meeting so we can see some other um, features of the Zoom app. Okay, so the meeting has started and we're looking at the interface which is asking to join with computer audio. So we have want to do that so that we can hear ourselves while the meeting is going on. Because we set, um, uh, because we set the app so that when a meeting is going on, it starts recording it without um, you actually recording, you know, pressing the record button. So that's where we have recording over here. 
you can choose to stop or pause the recording. So this page is giving you information about the meeting, the meeting topic, host, password, numeric password, and invitation URL. So if you want to send the URL to a participant to join, you can just copy the URL and then send to the person through whatever means. So over here, you can see some other settings like the mute setting. The mute setting has some other sub settings like selecting a microphone, selecting a speaker, testing the speaker and the microphone and some other stuff. And we also have the start video set. The start video settings, you can select a camera and you can also choose a virtual background. Yeah, if you do, do not like the background behind you, you can choose a virtual background like we um, said at the beginning. And the participants, for now, for this video, because this is just a tutorial, it's not a view, an um, actual meeting. So I just have me as the host and as the participant. So if if one other person joins this meeting, over here the participants will be two. Or well, you can see that the participants just one. And you can manage chats here. You click on chats. It has um, created the interface for the Zoom chat. So if I type something here, if I type hi everyone, for example, it's going to send it to everyone but if you do not want that if you had other participants then when you click this um, drop down arrow the other participants would appear as options so you can choose who you're sending the hi to so to remove the chat interface just click on chat again now the security settings is very important also you can see a group of controls that you would um, you have a set access to as the host you can decide to lock your meeting if you lock your meeting no other participant can join whether they have the id or the password so if this is ideal when you're having a lecture and you've set the lecture time to be 2 pm for instance so someone might decide to come late or join late for the lecture so if you if you begin the meeting at 2 and you check this lock meeting anyone who wants to join after two o'clock cannot join because you have locked the meeting also it can help you to um, perform some disciplinary action so if there's someone who is not following the conduct of the meeting or the lecture or who has um, broken a rule per se you can just make the person leave the meeting and then lock the meeting so the person can join also you can enable and disable the waiting room. I already explained at first that the waiting room is like a reception where participants who want to join the meeting have to wait and then the host has to grant them access, just like a reception. So if the, the participant has the ID and the password, the participant still has to wait for the host to grant access. If you have a large meeting, this is not recommended because the host will have to enable access to so many participants. Also, you have settings allow participants to share screen. If you're having um, an educative section, like session, I mean, if it's a class, you it is recommended that you leave this unchecked because if you grant access for your participants to be able to share their screen. Just imagine where two or more people want to share their screen at the same time. But since you're the host uh, or lecturer or the teacher or the tutor, it's ideal that you set it it's just the host that can share his or her screen for the call room in the meeting. But you can also you can allow participants to chat. But if you do that, if it's a, a class some naughty students can just use that as a dis distraction because they're chatting among themselves so and so it's recommended that you uncheck that if it's an educative section and uh, session and then you can allow participants to rename themselves so if someone was at that had the beginning of the session the person can choose to rename to become um in gossip for instance so, click on the participant setting it gives you the list of the participants so for this video it's just me the host and also participant so that's why it's just my 
um, account that is listed as a participant. Or if you, if we had more than one participant, all the participants would be listed here on the participants pane. Also, beside the participant's name, you have some options, some controls, further controls. So you can decide to mute a participant. Probably you, you want no further contributions from that participant, but you do not want the participant to leave the, group, the, the meeting. You could just mute the participant and then the participant can't um, you, you see anything in terms of audio. You can't hear the participant's contribution. And then some other controls like renaming and adding a profile picture but that's because I am the host so you can see that um, there's a recording going on my audio is on but my video is off I did I, I set it that way my audio is on but my video is on so um, at, um, and whenever I choose to I can turn on my video right here start video so I can just choose to click and then my video will be on so when you're done with a meeting, you can end right here. If you end, it gives you an option. Are you ending the meeting for everyone or are you leaving the meeting? So if you're a participant, you can choose to leave the meeting. Or if you're a host, if you end the meeting, if you leave the meeting, the meeting will still be on for every other person. Okay, so if you're a host and the class is over or the meeting is over, just end the meeting for all and then leave. Okay, something else, um, if you don't want to pass through the tedious um, method of um, muting a participant, you know, one by one, you can just come down here and mute all your participants. So you, you, you just be, if you're having a class for instance, you do the talking and they do the listening. When you're done with teaching and you want to receive questions from your students or your participants, you can then unmute your participants. Okay, so to the very important feature of Zoom, which is the share screen feature. There are a couple of other settings which you can change on the share screen, which is one participant can share at a time, multiple participants can share simultaneously, and advanced sharing options. Under advanced sharing options, you can see the options to allow one participant share at a time, which is recommended actually. And then under who can share only host so this is ideal when you're having a class okay so imagine a meeting or a class where more than one person can share and um, the host will lose control of the meeting and then things may get out of hand the meeting may become rowdy and that's not um, favorable so just leave the settings as only host still all depending on your it, it's depending on what you're doing so it's according to your preferences but if it is for educational purposes allowing one only one host to share is recommended then let's see what happens when you click on the share screen clicking on the share screen buttons bring some options which you can select so which screen do you want to share this presents all the open windows on your device so if you're using a desktop for example my desktop I have a couple of windows open so for instance you're having a class and you want to um, play a video which would um, you know help your class or help you drive a point which, which you want the students to learn from then you can select the particular window where the video is playing from but if you are going to play a video make sure that this button here share computer sound is checked so this will allow other participants hear the audio from your computer and see your share screen so let's keep this checked and then open the window which we are sharing from click on it and then click on share so this is a video of um, a robot fighting back and if I click on play I don't know. Yep. Yeah, so in this case you've shared the video and then your participants can hear the sound and can see the audio so if you're done with any particular share you can click on stop share 
you can also share some other thing like a presentation uh, this is the most popular shared screen um, right now because presentations make your work easy if you're um, trying to pitch an idea or if you're teaching so click on the window and then click on share you can easily start your slideshow yeah so you have your presentation going on you can move the slides and then your participants can see whatever you are doing there's an additional feature um, when you're sharing a presentation for example you can make some annotations on your presentation for instance click on annotate and then choose um, your what you want your tool what tool you want to use to annotate and let's let's draw something what kind of um, let me see which do we have let's just do something let's choose this this will allow you make a sketch over your presentation choose something else okay you can then use an eraser to clean that up what else can you do here if you're on this page and you want to emphasize a particular um, line for example the last line so you can just draw with your mouse hold your mouse or whatever device sorry my hand is unstable <laughs> yeah you can do that over you know, whatever you want to so that's it click back on your mouse if you're done with any of the tools you click the mouse so if you want to move to another slide can you notice that your annotation which you made on the other page is still appearing so what to do when you're done just um clear so it's it will give you options clear all drawings clear my drawings clear viewers drawings so whichever one so let's just clear all drawings so whatever annotations you've made on this presentation will be cleared another alternative is to use the eraser before um, switching to the next slide yeah so that's it there are so many other things that you can explore you can have a stamp or um, text you can even write text on your presentations so many things so it's cool you can also choose to share a whiteboard to make it look like an actual classroom this will present you with mini tools that you can use on the whiteboard so just imagine that you're using a board in a class if you want to make a sketch to further illustrate a point which you are presenting to your participants you can use any of the tools so let's try to do something let's draw what am I going to draw? Maybe you're trying to um, describe the relationship between one entity and another. You can just draw the normal shape of the head. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> an annotation like this and or an illustration like this means thank you my band. There are so many things you can do with the tools you have all based on your preference and what you're doing at the moment so you can clear all, clear all drawings and then stop sharing so you can see it's a whole lot of options for you to um to, 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 to make your presentation um, go well and and to efficiently replace the physical meetings and the physical classroom okay so when you're done with your meeting just click end and then choose the appropriate option which is end meeting for all okay so it's converting you remember we recorded we left our settings as record video or record meeting from beginning till end so it's now converting the um, recording to an mp4 format so that you can play it like a video and then you have audio also so if there are any settings or there are any functions that you don't understand or you don't really understand after this tutorial please remember to leave your questions on the comment section and we'll be sure to attempt those questions we are at your service thank you for watching and remember to like and subscribe to our channel for more educative videos 
and tutorials. See you in the next video. Bye.